Okay, good morning. So before I start my sermon, we're actually going to pray. God, thank you for this wonderful day where I'm able to give the sermon, Lord. I pray for everyone that is preaching today that you just give us the right words, give us peace for anyone that's anxious, help the words come out of my mouth, and just help us have a great day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 So I have a question. Have any of you ever been cold? Yes. yes. I don't know if this Florida weather, not it's just right not now. it for yes. me. Oh, this yeah. is not what I signed up for. But what do you usually do when you're cold? Bundle up. Bundle up, put a sweater on, put a blanket on, and then you feel comforted. Yes. Here's another one. Did any of you ever get scared when you were a little kid and you went into your parents' bedroom? Yeah. And they comforted yeah. you and you just snuggled and you were like, okay, I feel safe. I can go back in my room now. Mm -hmm. That is what God does for us. He is our comforter. So I'm going to be reading out of Psalm 23, verses 1 through 4. If you want to turn there with me, I'll be a little bit. Okay, so it starts. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In this psalm, David is speaking about how he is walking through the valley of the shadow of death, and he feels alone, but he is reminded that God is with him and is comforting him along the way. Another important point in this context is that David is remembering who God is, and that even though he's walking through this valley, the Lord is right beside him. It says right here, he the Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down. He leads me beside still waters. He is leading him through the still waters. God does not just comfort us, but he walks beside us through every hurt, through every joy, and through every tear we shed. This is an important point because it's not just about God being his comforter, but it's about him walking beside him. We are never truly alone because God is right there beside us. And that's just amazing. This shows that he cares about us in each and every moment. There were three things that I noticed about this passage when I read it. The first is he is my shepherd. He says that's exactly how he starts. The Lord is my shepherd. This is so significant because I know we've all heard, most of us, about the analogy of he leaves the 99 for the one. It talks about in Luke 15, 4, he even asked the Pharisees, would you leave the 99 sheep to find the one that is lost? God is the one who leaves the 99 to find the one who is lost. This is what David is speaking about when he talks about God being his shepherd. Are we trusting God as our shepherd? Are we trusting that he's going to leave those 99 sheep to come find us? The second point is he restores my soul. It says... He leads you besides the waters, and he restores my soul. When this verse speaks about restoring, it also means renew, which essentially means to make new again. God continues to restore our soul through the trials and blessings, through the valleys and mountains, and through the highs and lows. It is a process that, begins to, that he begins to take us through, and it continuously strengthens our faith. And the last, which is the most important, is he is my comforter. This is the main point of the passage. He says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. David focuses on God being his comforter, even when walking through the valley. It's not just when he's having a great day. It's not just when he's having a bad day, but through the valley of the shadow of death. When we are walking through a hard season or everything is going well, we need to look to God for comfort. God is a true source of comfort for us, and there is no greater comfort than the comfort he gives us. Mm -hmm. But how do we look to him to comfort us and be reminded of that daily? Reading the Bible is a great place to start. Reading the verses that talk about God being our comforter and him walking beside us amidst our trials. Another way is to sit in the silence and listen to the voice of God, even meditating on the word of God. Just being still and knowing that he is in that moment with us is enough. So the word comfort is actually defined as to give strength and hope to, and to ease the grief or trouble of. This is how God comforts us. He gives us strength and hope and eases our grief through the hardest times. 
The word comfort in Hebrew is, forgive me if I like butcher this, it's yana shimuni, which is in a pale form, ignore that, the pale intensifies the word comfort. There are words of comfort, there is comfort in someone being there for you, but the greatest comfort is when someone you love takes you in their arms and hugs you, weeps with you and assures you that everything will be okay. The greatest comfort comes when someone is able to tell you in just the right way. The way that you personally need to be told that it will be okay, and then it really is okay. That is comfort in a pile form. That is the comfort that God can give. In those moments of unknown, or those tough seasons we are walking through, God is one who comforts us during those times. So when we are struggling, who are we looking to, or what are we looking to to comfort us? Are you looking to God to be your true comfort? Thank you.